Hi, this is Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video BC03. The topic is integration by use of partial fractions. It covers the BC manual from pages 15 through 17. Let's review an integration problem from AB Calculus. We want to integrate x plus 5 over x squared plus 10x plus 1 dx. We did this by u substitution. We let u equal x squared plus 10x plus 1, and du was equal to 2x plus 10 dx, or if we want to, 2 quantity x plus 5. Luckily, we have an x plus 5 in our problem, so we can multiply the numerator by 2 and multiply the fraction by 1 half, and we have 1 half the integral of du over u, and that turns out to be 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of u, or 1 half natural log of x squared plus 10x plus 1 plus c. We kind of got lucky in this problem. When we let u equal x squared plus 10x plus 1, our du turned out to be 2 quantity x plus 5 dx, and we just happened to have an x plus 5 in our problem. Look at the next problem, though. We want the integral of 8x plus 32 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 dx. We set the problem up the same way. We let u equal x squared plus 3x plus 10, and du turns out to be 2x plus 3 dx. Now, in this case, there is nothing that we can do to the 2x plus 3 to get an 8x plus 32. We can multiply by 4, but that will give us an 8x plus 12. We need to get exactly 8x plus 32, which means that with our knowledge at this moment, we cannot do this integration. In order to do a problem of this sort, we use a technique that you may or may not have learned in pre-calculus. We look at a fraction that's in the form of a polynomial over a polynomial, where the denominator is a, has a degree of n, and the numerator has a degree less than n. We say that we can write this as a series of fractions in the form of a constant term over a linear term, plus a constant term over a linear term. And we may have a number of these fractions in the form of a constant term over a linear term. These terms are called partial fractions. So let's look at the integral of 8x plus 32 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 dx. The first thing we're going to do is factor x squared plus 3x minus 10 and we'll get x plus 5 times x minus 2. We realize now that we can write 8x plus 32 over x plus 5 times x minus 2 as some constant a over x plus 5 plus some constant b over x minus 2. Let's multiply both sides by x plus 5. That gives us 8x plus 82 over x plus minus 2 is equal to a plus b times the quantity x plus 5 over x minus 2. We're going to let x equal negative 5. When we do that, we end up getting 8 times negative 5 plus 82 over negative 5 minus 2 is equal to a. And therefore, a is equal to 42 over negative 7 which is negative 6. We'll do the same thing to find b. We'll start with our expression 8x plus 82 over x plus 5 times x minus 2 is equal to a over x plus 5 plus b over x minus 2. Now we will multiply both sides by x minus 2. And we're left with 8x plus 82 over x plus 5 equals a times x minus 2 over x plus 5 plus b. Now let's let x equal 2. 
and we end up getting 8 times 2 plus 82 over 2 plus 5 equals b. And therefore, b equals 98 over 7, which is 14. So we could now say that the integral of 8x plus 82 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 dx is the same thing as integrating negative 6 over x plus 5 plus 14 over x minus 2 dx. And each of these integrals are simple to take. We get negative 6, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5, plus 14 times the absolute value, uh, natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 plus c. This method was found by Oliver Heaviside, a mathematician who lived approximately 1900. However, it involves a lot of writing and it can be streamlined. So if we want to take the integral of 8x plus 82 over x plus 5 times x minus 2, realize that it will equal an integral of a over x plus 5 plus b over x minus 2 dx. To find a, we take our finger and cover the x plus 5. We're left with 8x plus 82 over x minus 2. We now let x equal negative 5 by setting x plus 5 equal to 0 and plug that negative 5 into the expression, 8x plus 82 over x minus 2, and we get negative 6. To find b, we do the opposite. We cover the x minus 2, and we let x equal 2 by setting x minus 2 equal to 0. We then plug our 2 into 8x plus 82 over x plus 5, and we get 14. So since a is negative 6 and b is 14, then we're integrating negative 6 over x plus 5 plus 14 over x minus 2 dx. And now the integration is easy. Negative 6, natural log, absolute value of x plus 5, plus 14, natural log, absolute value, x minus 2 plus c. Let's see how this technique is used in several problems. Number two, ask for the integral of x minus 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 5 dx. Our first step is to factor the denominator into x minus 5 times x minus 1. And that will leave us with an integration of two fractions, one with the denominator of x minus 5, one with the denominator of x minus 1. Using the heavy side method, when x is 5, we place the x equals 5 into 5 minus 4 over 5 minus 1 and get 1 fourth. For the second fraction, we let x equals 1 and plug in the 1 to 1 minus 4 over 1 minus 5. And we end up getting 1 fourth, the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 5, plus 3 fourths the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. In 3, we have to integrate 2 over x squared minus x minus 20. The denominator factors into x minus 5 times x plus 4. So we have two fractions, one with x minus 5, the other with the denominator of x plus 4. When x is 5, we get 2 ninths for the first fraction. When x is equal to negative 4, we get negative 2 ninths for the second fraction, leaving us with 2 ninths, natural log, absolute value of x minus 5, minus 2 ninths, natural log, absolute value of x plus 4. We can do two things to simplify here. We can factor out the 2 ninths and use the fact that natural log of x minus 5 minus natural log of x plus 4 is the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 5 over x plus 4 plus c. In 4, we're asked to integrate x squared plus 12x plus 12 over x cubed minus 4x dx. Our denominator factors into three expressions, x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we will have three partial fractions. The first has a denominator of x. And when you let x equal 0, you end up getting 12 over 
0 plus 2 times 0 minus 2, which is 12 over negative 4. In the second fraction, we let x equal negative 2, and our numerator turns out to be negative 8, and our denominator becomes negative 2 times negative 4, which is 8. In the third fraction, has, it has a denominator of x minus 2, and for the numerator, we let x equal 2, and we get 40 over 2 times 4, or 8. So we end up with negative 3, natural log absolute value of x, minus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2, plus 5, natural log absolute value x minus 2, plus c. There are two conditions for this method to work. First, the denominator must have a higher power than the numerator. And secondly, the denominator must factor into non-repeating linear expressions. If we have a repeating expressions, like an x squared or an x minus 5 quantity squared, there is another method, and that is taught in the non-essential section of this manual. What happens when the numerator's highest power is greater than the denominator's highest power? There is a way we can do this. We do some long division. We divide x squared minus 6x plus 5 into x cubed minus 9x squared plus 24x minus 17. x squared goes into x cubed x times. We multiply out and subtract and we get negative 3x squared plus 19x and bring down the negative 17. x squared goes into negative 3x squared negative 3 times. We multiply out and then subtract and we're left with x minus 2. So our integral turns out to be the integral of x minus 3 plus x minus 2 over x minus 5 times x minus 1. So we can integrate x minus 3 to get x squared over 2 minus 3x, and then use our heavy side method on x minus 2 over x minus 5 times x minus 1, and we get our partial fractions. So our final answer is x squared over 2 minus 3x plus 3 fourths natural log of the absolute value of x minus 5 plus 1 fourth the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. Sometimes it does not appear that an expression can be integrated, but a little trickery can help. In 6, we have the integral of e to the x over quantity e to the x minus 1 quantity e to the x plus 6. This looks like a partial fractions problem, but the denominator does not use linear terms. However, let us let u equal e to the x. du, therefore, is e to the x dx. So this problem is in the form of du over u minus 1 times u plus 6. This problem now can be done using the partial fractions method. And we end up getting 1 7th natural log absolute value of u minus 1 over u plus 6. We then replace the u with e to the x, and our final answer is 1 7th natural log absolute value e to the x minus 1 over e to the x plus 6 plus c. Number 8 ask for the area under the curve 80 over x squared plus 6x plus 8 from x equals 0 to x is equal to 4. We know that this is a definite integral, and we can write this as the definite integral from 0 to 4 of 80 over x plus 2, x plus 4, dx. Using partial fractions, we get the integral from 0 to 4 of 80 over 2 over x plus 2, plus 80 over negative 2 over x plus 4 dx. Integrating each piece, we get 40 natural log absolute value of x plus 2 minus 40 natural log absolute value of x plus 4 evaluated from 0 to 4. 
We can simplify this and write this as 40 natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2 over the absolute value of x plus 4 evaluated from 0 to 4. This gives us 40 natural log of 6 over 8 minus 40 natural log of 2 over 4. And if we want to, we could write this as 40 natural log of 3 fourths over 1 half, and our final answer is 40 natural log of 3 halves. I'll leave problems 7 and 9 to you. An application problem that we can certainly all identify with. A person with norovirus boards a cruise ship of 2,000 people. Let x be the number of newly infected people at time t. The virus will spread at a rate proportional to the product of the total number infected and the total not infected. So we have a differential equation dx dt equals k times the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity 2000 minus x. And you're asked to solve this deq for x. Our first step is to cross multiply to get dx over quantity 2000 minus x. Quantity x plus 1 is equal to k dt. We would like our x's terms to be positive, so we multiply both sides by negative 1 and get dx over quantity x minus 2,000, quantity x plus 1 equals negative k dt. We're now free to use partial fractions, and we integrate 1 over 2,001 over x minus 2,000 plus negative 1 over 2,001 over x plus 1 dx equals the integral of negative k dt. And this gives 1 over 2001 natural log absolute value of x minus 2000 over x plus 1 equals negative kt plus c. Realizing that k is a constant whose value we have not been given, we multiply both sides by 2001 to get natural log absolute value x minus 2000 over x plus 1 is equal to negative 2001 kt plus c. And now we can use our log rules to write x minus 2000 over x plus 1 equals c e to the negative 2001 kt. Since x represents the number of newly infected people at time t, when t equals 0, x equals 0, because at time equals 0, there's no one newly infected. So we end up getting negative 2,000 equals c e to the 0, and c equals negative 2,000. So our final answer is x minus 2,000 over x plus 1, equals negative 2,000 e to the negative 2,001 kt. We could solve this for x, but we will not take the time to do that.